What's up, guys? I got my boy Gertrude here. We're gonna go over three suggestions he has. One of them, uh, one of them's not his from the GZW suggestions in the official Discord. Then we're going to go over Landmarks reaction video, basically, to Operator Drewski's video on the Alpha playtest. And then we're going to go over Big Fry's video. The one for the 23 minute footage, not the playtest footage. All right, let's uh, take it away, Gertrude, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm Gertrude. Uh, I'm a lore goblin for Grace and Warfare. I've watched a lot of videos and digged into the press kit, basically. Lots of suggestions. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And I could uh, definitely attest for this as a... I had just finished a video an, an hour long with a few buddies and I seen him recovering it uh, in the GZW Discord <laughs> with a few people. I was yeah. like, look at this. <laughs> Minutes after it came out. So uh, he's definitely yeah. a goblin for sure for that, uh, that lore and uh, anything GZW. Yeah, I dig stuff up especially the maps and pictures and stuff that's what i like best for sure well uh what suggestion you got us with today gertrude weapon bracing on environment all right so basically be able to brace on corners or walls uh, trees light poles power poles uh, window sills, stuff like that. I would, because I didn't actually see that happening. Yeah. And the sway was kind of crazy. Like, sure, they were standing up and still, but like, even crouching down, uh, the sway was pretty crazy. I don't know if the uh, arm stamina was out, but it went, the arm stamina went down quite fast. And yeah, it, it like, some were actually at uh, like a pole or something like or behind a tree so it would make sense yeah to you brace on it you you want that constant cover factor especially in a game that's this realistic yeah and yeah then exactly like if, if you could brace i mean i've seen it in movies all the time especially like uh some john wick i mean foof love that uh that movie but uh yeah bracing against something is realistic you know you could you could yeah. always do that um, yeah like a wall or something like before you scale it yeah like just put it up and check or a corner or whatever even i i believe it's uh it's call of duty that has this feature i used to play a lot of yeah. dmz and you could you could brace it on like um pretty much anything I can't remember yeah. if you could brace while prone, which is kind of insane. Uh, especially if you would have a bipod or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Except bipod. Yeah, yeah, basically. I hope they have bipods as well. Yeah. Because the... I don't want to lie down without a bipod and with a scope and like an SR25 762. Like, if <laughs> if I'm going to have sway I'm, while I'm lay, lying down, that's going to be annoying fast. Yeah. And Especially I'm, on the long range stuff. I'm pretty sure Tarkov doesn't even have that. So that's uh, if we get bipods and bracing, I'm sure that's gonna bring a good bit of people here just because Tarkov doesn't have it. <laughs> yeah, and it it makes the shooting more accurate as well instead of the Tarkov like style, like what I've seen personally. It's like you you shoot full auto and just do recoil management instead of doing placed shot basically yeah it was really like that before this recent patch i'm not uh defending it in any manner because it took them this long to uh actually get a good stable recoil, recoil. build uh you know uh with all stability puns intended you know yeah. but um <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think the most run run was like M4 with like 100 stability or something in Tarkov. I don't know, but it was even with the most re uh, re uh, recoil reduction, it was still too much. And so this looks good, this game at least. 
at least in the recoil ap uh, the apartment. It's just this way I'm wor uh, worried about. Uh, and out of everything else except like uh, ghillie suits, this is like my most favorite one because, dude, I mean, ghillie suits is ghillie suits, you know? But uh, yeah. if anyone watching this agrees and thinks this should be in the game, go ahead and go do a bump. Bump is going to get it pushed to the top, I believe. And as well as showing the devs like, oh, hey, people are interested in this, as well as liking it, of course. But um, that that's what helps the community. The devs yeah. listen. If, if you want to see something in this game, definitely the suggestions is the way to go. But before posting your suggestion, please search it. Whatever terms you think may pop up, another suggestion that's already there previous. Because if you're yeah. just posting the same suggestion over and over, it, it'll get seen, you know, but um, it, it makes it a little bit harder for the mods to control like, oh, these people want this, you know, and yada, yada, yada. You know, just try and throw it all into one suggestion um, post-creation. Especially now with all the new players that came in after the pre-alpha yeah. test. Yeah, I think we're, what, 50,000 now? Yeah, 42,000. No. Uh, yeah, yeah 42,000. Yeah. Close. We grew. Oh yeah. We we Big grew time. we we grew like ten K the last like ten days or something. Yeah, it's nuts. Yep. I could I could only imagine when it comes out because uh I don't think oh, um that... many people that play Arma really care for um uh, Tarkov, but I think they're really gonna care for Grey Zone Warfare. You know I think they see players as well will come over oh, yeah. and check it out. Yeah. That too, that too. I've been uh, playing de Dead Side on and off right now. And uh, yeah, that's basically a DayZ clone without zombies. And it's yeah. just, ah, uh, man. Waiting for Grey Zone, you know? Yeah, we all do. <laughs> but um, any other uh, suggestions for that uh, yeah. post that you want to go so, over? I had uh, two more, and... They are together in some ways, but still separate. It's like an ATAC system. It's uh, not one of mine, but I have the P P PDA in mine from, from like Stalker Anomaly, basically. But it would basically be the same thing. You have like an Android, um, Android uh, phone or like an iPhone or whatever on a chest rig and instead of pulling up the map like we see in the pre-alpha you would pull up the map on the actual cell phone and you would you you could actually free look on the phone and see what you're doing and, and if you hear something or want to look up and like scan around you can do that so it's more integrated into the game instead of just i'm just gonna pull up the map with m or whatever yeah uh, it will make it more, yeah, it will make it harder to check where your friends are as well. It would actually, like, immerse yourself into the game, I think, instead of just having a map button where you can zoom in, like, oh, he's over there, like, you know, because we would, we will have blue force trackers, basically. It will tell you where your friendlies are. Um, so, yeah. I think that would be good. And with that system on your chest rig, you would have a chat for your faction, basically. So for your 16 people in your faction, you could actually type, like you would have a messaging app or messaging group for your faction. Um, if you like, oh, there's campers over in this area. Don't land on that LC. Because how would you tell that to your other to your whole faction if you know about it and you know it's a, a popular lc right where everyone's going into the middle of the map you land on that lc and there's like maybe four guys just sitting there camping it yeah um so it would be a great warning system or just want to tell some normal info like over here or if someone asks for help you never know right True, true. Um, it could be, could be quite nice. Like, oh, I need help over here. There's like, I don't know, 
big AI or, oh, the boss spawned, the boss respawned. Like, I need help over here or, yeah, like, something like that. Um, yeah. And, it, and the next one would be radio. But, yeah, do you have anything about the ATAC you want to add? Um, yeah, there's, there's like some things that could be added with it. Like, uh, so you, obviously if you give call outs via the grid system, like, Hey, you have enemies here, whatnot, stuff like that. But, um, you could also do like some marker placements per faction to show oh, your yeah. whole faction, but that could be just a little bit too much if it's per faction. Yeah. So like, uh, people would just like do stuff on it just to yes. fuck with people i guess spam yeah you, you could easily but, just spam it but uh tied to the group i think that should yeah. possibly be a thing for for uh, yeah for your friend group where you go in the main menu gets with your friends and then go into a, a, like a server yeah that 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 should be a thing like you can tie it to your friend group or whatever group you join the server with yeah that would be nice and um like how you free look and look down at your chest, you could also like uh, lock in place and then rotate your character around 360 degrees and then see your actual person on the map move. I just don't know how it would look. Um, like when you look down, would you automatically zoom in to the map, to the uh, PDA? Or, you know, there would have to be things no. like that implemented. Yeah, yeah. So... I'm guessing, or uh, I think there is some models on Stalker where you actually take out your PDA, but you don't look at it. You have to right click it to zoom in, like, you know, move your head like closer. And then you right click it again, you move out and then you can free look normally. And then you, yeah. So you would have like, yeah, basically right click, like you free look, look down or you right click and you like zoom into the phone basically. Yeah. That makes sense. So, yeah, and you could do it like far away as well, if you're you know exactly where you supposed to do, and the chat. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> now, do you do you feel this should be a purchasable item where you could lose it, or should no. it be a fixed? Yeah, I I think it should be a fixed one since you're you you're you basically working for a company, right? Um, yeah. I th I think they would like issue you like an ATAC system because you don't want to kill your own faction uh, me uh, members, right? <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think that should be a fixed one. Um, and it just clips on on whatever uh, gear you have. If, I think it would be cool if you could actually have it on your chest or on your arm, like de depending how you want to have the ATAC system. I, uh, like different placements. Just a little notation. I think it was Rick or perhaps even Mara stated it. And this is not to quote them, but um, just going off of memory. At a between opposing faction and your faction, it will not be easy to tell. Is that just a visual representation, or like oh, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I basically going into the sense that I'm pretty sure they don't have plans for this right now, or that this is not implemented, where you could see your I friendlies on the map. So just a. Uh, you know, a little food for thought, I guess. And um, something I, I basically I of... say all the time is you could you could implement like a difficulty level system where you could toggle on and off different aspects you would like to see. So like see your friendlies on the map, you know, or just squad mates. But it it ties into PvP yeah. to where you really have to watch a balance on that PvP aspect. If you could see your squad, that's fine. But if you could see your faction, it gets to the point where it's like, uh, I mean, you really want that player to question if you're friend or foe, as in, I mean, opposing faction or not, you know, or yeah. uh, an AI. 
a geared AI. I mean, obviously you don't you won't look like a bandit, you know. But um, I, don't, I don't think I don't think you will look like an AI either, even the military AI, because we've seen a couple of photos okay. of the enemy check enemy checkpoints, if I remember correctly. Like they look nothing like the PMCs that we've seen so far, at least, or the gear we've seen so far, because most of them don't have a backpack. I noticed it. So mm. and they have different kind of like they're. They are full camoed, like they're like they are like the mirror, like a military, right? So they have their own unified gear, like everyone has the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so I, th and that's the military. I don't know if the, there's maybe high geared PMC AI in the middle. We we don't know. Like it could be. So it'd be even harder to see if they're friendless or not. Uh, I think in one of the videos, I can't remember which one now. Uh, seen too many. Uh, they talk when they just landed. I think they just landed with the helicopter, and they uh, someone asked, "Will we be able to see our faction?" And I think he said, "Yes, you will be able to see your faction on the map, mm. but you can't see the other factions. You can just see your, your factions. So if you're basically out in the woods or jungle in the middle, in the hills there." If you see someone or hear someone shooting in front of you, you could pull up your map and you could see if is there a faction fight? Like, is your faction involved in that or not? Or should you just like if if they're not, you can still go in third party. If they're your faction, you could try and help, but it would it would still be hard to recognize who is who because even if you can see them on the map. That's really hard to translate to looking through a scope. Like, who's who here? Like, I think it would be still really hard to, e even if you could see your uh, friendlies on the map, like your faction friendlies, not your squad mates, but like outside of that, I think it would be really hard to, in a fight, to lo uh, locate, okay, he's a friend, he's an enemy. I think that would be really hard. Unless yeah. they're too far, unless they're too far apart. But if they're like fighting close range, like a, I don't know buildings and stuff, I think that would be too hard to like. You would just have to sit back and wait how it goes, basically. Yeah, and we've kind of seen exactly like their um, what they're aiming for because for the longest time, probably about two months ago, we didn't know that there was going to be a map. You know, we didn't know that yeah. there would be. A map whatsoever and then no, I actually, there's a map I actually so that, yeah i actually thought it would be a paper map actually yeah we, a physical paper just, map <laughs> yeah 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 I, I actually thought we would put like uh i can't remember which game it is but they actually have uh yeah Tarkov has map is in them but I don't, I don't think it was that one but yeah i think it was some other, other game that you actually pull up you, a physical map and then it's like you are around ish this area because you're character knows ish where you are right and then you have to like okay where's the landmarks around here okay there 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 and then you have to figure out to yourself but yeah yeah it's, it's, it's gonna be a lot a, better yeah it's nice we got blue uh blue force trackers so for sure but uh if you want to carry on to the next one yeah whatever you have emergency slash normal radio and text and information channel it goes into the the ATAC system a little a lit, just a little bit yeah so well what i was thinking i ha i have to re rewrite the post but uh so one thing is like you can role play as a qrf basically so if you have a radio that's just for your faction and you're in deep shit and you're like, oh, I need help over here. And then other p players can come and help. That's basically QRF, but not really. Um, and just like, um, yeah, a voice channel to your faction. So if you want to work together, you can still like uh, co coordinate ex instead of just which Discord server are you on? Like... So you would have some immersion with the radio. Um, it would be a problem with people, uh, kids. Uh, yeah. 
Immu- uh, immutu- uh, yeah, like, yeah, children <laughs> basically screaming <laughs> stuff in the radio. Like that, that that could be a problem. As long as there's um, a mute feature. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could add a mute uh, mute feature. Like I don't want to hear that guy talk because he's annoying or whatever. Um, and then there's a text text and information channel that goes into the ATAC system or the PDA or, or whatever you want to call it. So you would have a faction chat basically on the phone, like a messaging app or whatever. Um, take like inspiration from other games that, where you actually pull up your phone and you have like in the game basically like that you would have a faction app you just click and you can chat with the your faction on your server um, yeah just yeah basically oh someone is camping over here camping the LC you just type that out which LC it is or what grid coordinates there it is and stuff like that yeah, it would be great for solo players that just want to like scout stuff out and just want to relay information. Just playing recon, like just reconning, like that would be cool. Um, yeah, and, they... and there, I think there was one more. Yeah, to have you have a at base or your FOB, like your forward operating base, you would have a radio that is on all the time, basically. So that radio will listen to the faction radio. So if you're in the base and you don't, don't uh, you don't have uh, and your radio are off, you can still hear it if something happens out in the world. And you would have a big TV on the side of that with the faction chat. I think that would that would be really cool. So yeah, the immersion will be will be bigger. I think with that. So you would have the big TV with the faction chat, and then you would have a radio that just plays the uh, faction radio, whatever happens on the net. That would be pretty funny. So for pretty, the pretty cool. for the faction radio, just like right off the bat, if um, if it's something for balancing, I think would be pretty cool for just at main. So obviously the faction radio would be only to listen to other factions so say for their factions it would only listen to the chat where they're physically going into their faction radio chat it won't be able to listen to them just randomly you know stuff like that but um also i think that would be a pretty good thing to tie into the territory control once they bring that up you know so say your faction radio that listens to other factions radios can only uh, grow out uh, a certain span perhaps like um 2000 kilometers from the main the first main town where you capture a radio as one of the first objectives you have you know and then once you capture that radio you could listen and tune in to that faction radio there should be like um Oh, so you mean you can like uh, surveil other fa- like enemy faction radios? Yeah. Ooh. Basically, okay. um, just for like uh, another portion um, or an addition to what you were saying, but um, yeah. so like just just to bring it back to DMZ, there's a radio you could grab that bleeps enemies on the map. I'm not talking about something like that, but for the playability and what I'm about to say next. This could be tied into the territories portion, which would be tied into map specific, you know? So in terms, you might leave a server, get on the next day, and that server doesn't have it. It's map specific missions, basically, you know? Map specific. Oh, oh, oh you let like your faction, the <laughs> territory control, like what yeah. do you have? What your faction have control over, and if you're inside of that, you can. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah that you sounds... get. Yeah, it, it sounds decent in my head, but I'm I'm going into this blind and it's just like, ooh, hey, look, look at this idea. You know, it it would be so something were... cool to keep uh, people playing, I think, and definitely joining other maps and playing. But uh, yeah. it is just and people would be careful to call if they're for in reinforcements enemy, or something uh, yeah yeah because if they're in enemy territory and they talk on a faction net 
to yeah. their faction, their their enemy territory, and the enemies can actually listen in. Yeah, if there are in the to- yeah yeah that would be cool. You get what true. I'm saying? Yeah, cool. it's, yeah yeah yeah. I, I but think then it'd you be would have cool. some kind of mission or like a radio station. You have to like do a mission to take over, and that that mission can refresh when an enemy takes it back or whatever. Yep. Like it has. Yep. It has to be. Um, yeah. Basically, like a daily quest, but yeah, I yeah that would be. Like the first thing you do when you get into a new server with your buddies, like okay, let, we are gonna act in this area. Let's take over the radio net over there, so yep. we can listen in if someone is stalking us or something like. Yeah, that- pretty much. And um, I think this is spanning from like basically dead side. Uh, so I recently started playing it again, and I there's a radio in it. And oh, okay. I'm- I'm not I'm not sure exactly how the radio works, but I had watched a few YouTube videos and every now and then the person will pull out the radio, their handheld radio while running through the map, and it'll do this like weird comms thing where like it basically alerts you that enemies are nearby. So I mean maybe they might implement something like that, you know, but it's like there's no surprise feature after that if you're constantly yeah. just pulling out a radio. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stuff like I that, don't you think, know. I don't, I don't think it should be like listen, uh, no, uh, telling you there's enemies nearby. I think it should just listen in in your territory, ter- uh, territory that you hold as your faction. You can just listen in on the enemy faction net. Yeah, I think that like because if so. I played Hunt Showdown and they had a, a trait slash perk or whatever you want to call it that said uh, if you use the special uh, ability called Dark Sight, everyone can use it. If you just press E, it goes dark, Dark Sight. But if there were enemies nearby within 75 meters, so I think it was, it was red in the like around the uh, around the edge of the screen. So my friend, he played that. So he just ran with dark sight all the time, and we just protected him from zombies. And as soon as it got red, everyone stopped. Like it slowed down the game so much, it was quite annoying. So I don't think it should tell you there's people nearby because that would just yeah, you'd be way more cautious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you want the surprise, you want the action that surprise action you don't want okay there's players close by we know they're close by so now we just hunker down and wait for them to get out or push or make make a mistake you don't you don't really want that no i think there's another thought so behind the whole territory control and radios you should perhaps have a base commander where you could select male or female, obviously, because there's a lot of people that want to hear a female voice, not a male voice. But um, <laughs> but um, while walking through the map, um, you should be able to touch like um, and this could be whenever the faction, um, uh, the zones portion comes out where you could take the zones. Yeah. yeah. Or right now, even where you can have the whole radio thing implemented, even without the zone taking um the territories and all so whenever you come into contact with a territory that has a radio active or the enemy radio your commander can come online we're detecting uh an enemy radio online or whatever you know enemy oh, tower yeah, online yeah, something yeah. like that or, just to let you or, know yeah like you, enemy interference or whatever yeah, like, you, you yeah, don't you don't yeah, want it all the time you know no, you no, definitely no, don't like, want it on all the time where uh, it shows you on the map you know what i mean who has what yeah. you know i that would just be that would break the realism factor for me yeah 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 just like something like oh there's enemy inter- uh, radio interference in like in the mm-hmm. area and the area can be like well, quite the- huge right because this is a huge map there's a tower it, active in your area, something simple like that, even, you know, yeah. something fast and simple in case you're in a gunfight and then, oh, shoot, and you then, know, I can't hear footsteps or yeah. something, you know? 
and then you would know that you shouldn't talk on the net or on the radio except like to the faction because if you say too much that might expose you yeah yeah uh, especially if you try calling for backup (laughs) yeah and um this could also implement a portion of so this is going to be a little mind-blowing for you so say dude I, i need to talk to rick dude this is just such a fucking great idea Rick's going to be like, hold on, let's get you on the team real quick. All right, what you said, what you thought behind uh, your thought process behind this. So your faction is obviously going to be able to take your town's radio very easily. And the, the radio yeah. should be located on your side of the town where you can walk out the base three minutes, be at that radio station to uh, I don't think, activate the tower. I don't- yeah, I don't think the first town should have it. I think that should always be inside of the FOB's radio tower or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So all so the first town is always safe or whatever you would call it. It's not safe, but it's like the radio is all is always on there basically. And yeah. and so other other factions can't come and take your your radio because that would be just annoying. Uh, and, but the, all the other points of interest on the map should have a radio tower. But the, like, yeah, a radio, a radio station, maybe. Like, no, no, yeah, maybe, like something like that. So, or like a to negate a little bit of the PvP, I guess, would be for that to happen. And as we know right now, the main towns are all the same. So, what yeah, other or, purpose? Or yeah, mostly the same. What other purpose than maybe a mission, which I don't know why they would do if the, all the towns are going to be the same, which I'm totally fine with for right now, but I, I would really like a, just a little bit difference, you know? But yeah. I, I understand balancing, you know? I just, people will be turned off from the copy face, but uh, besides the subject, so it's just, it's weird and hard to try and word this. So. There's no other reason for any other opposing faction to go to your main town location unless it's really for PvP. I mean, there's nothing yeah. to explore because it's all the same town, basically. That's where I'm yeah. getting at. Yeah. So if you go there and their FOB's radio is covering that area, when you call in an LZ, they should hear it over the radio. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. And but because of PvP, I, you know? Yeah. I don't think the enemies should be able to have an LC. Or or are you talking about that zone's faction yeah. calls in a radio and the enemy hears it? No, yeah, I'm talking about LZs. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't stated, but I'm speculating that 1,000% every LZ point is usable by any other operation. Um, not operation, uh, operating faction, uh, Ooh, opposing okay. faction. That's what okay. I was trying to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, like I was saying before, if you if you have that radio in that area, and another faction comes in, because remember they have the choice to just leave, you know. And if they don't know yeah. about this feature, they call in an LZ. It does a relay, and then the main uh, your your commander speaks. Hey, look, somebody's calling in a lz in your area that's not your faction you might want to check that out yeah. you know that that'll yeah, engage yeah. your pvp right there which we yeah, want yeah, exactly. you know it, it won't tell you what location what lz so you have three spots to run to per Ooh. per uh, poi basically you know what i'm saying yeah 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 this is becoming a very good and interesting <laughs> conversation here yeah yeah i i i I, I just thought of something great instead of having uh instead of having the command base commander telling you there's an enemy radio in there it it's only the base commander will only talk to you when an enemy calls in an lc close to you so like oh we 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 heard a radio call um that the uh some uh, some other faction is calling in an LC close to you. We don't know where, like, find it. Like, you, you know, right? Instead yeah. of having it anywhere in the world, it's just for LCs. 
Yeah, basically um, just like a, a be aware, but also like have that yeah. enemy radio is online portion. Because say you're a PvP person and you're coming into the um, the airfield, right? Yeah. And you don't know that there's an enemy radio online. If you're commander or you don't get notified some type of way, if you call in an LZ, those other players in that area that have that tower that's maybe going strictly for PvP could be spread out and camping you, you know? And whenever you call in that LZ, it just tells them, hey, look, they called the LZ in, get ready, you know? So you, yeah. you might want to backtrack and call an LZ elsewhere. And there's other ways to do this too, so... You could call an LZ and just wait for an ambush. Yeah, that's so. In, so instead of just calling one LC, you call two. You you call on two different like on two different LCs, and then you wait and see what happens. I mean, and then you call and then you call it again. But then everyone would just run. Everyone would call two LCs every time because the first time you go there, like first, like the first LC will be a high chance to get like ambushed so they would just call another one and then just look around at all all the because like let's say we start at base camp b like where everyone else started in the alpha right yeah and you have the palong airfield that's across the map like how long is that flight gonna take like eight minutes like yeah i'm guessing it yeah yeah I, I, i'm i'm like i'm guessing it's gonna take like yeah, yeah, 10 minutes across the map. I think they're not going to fly the right straight zone. They're going to fly... They, they don't want to fly over the great, uh, ground zero... Uh, yeah, what's called? area. The, the jungle. Yeah, so they will like go to Tiger Bay or something like that. They'll fly and, around, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good. It's, it's, it's going to take a while, right? So, and it should be like... A, you you have to wait for minutes to call the next one because otherwise people are just gonna call lz after lz after lz <laughs> yeah yeah lc on or, or they're gonna call lcs on all the airfield lcs and just pick one of them and hope like it's one in three chance they're gonna get ambushed right and even if they get ambushed and the other team is split up as well to cover all the lcs it's gonna be yeah, I think it should be you can only call in one LC. Yeah, hundred percent. Wait, and you have to wait four minutes after that helicopter leaves that LC the first time. Like, I, I yeah, I think it should be some kind of. Remember, that's the easy way out is calling the LZ, and you totally have a choice to push hoof it, not huff it, <laughs> hoof it on the ground. He likes to uh, correct yeah. me every time. Which he is uh, correct. Okay. It is hoof it, but um, mm. yeah, to uh, hoof it on the ground. But, um, the basics behind everything that I was saying is PvP aspect. You know, I don't know how it would look in PVE if they'd even implement that. But um, to me, it's something that's pretty simple to implement. You know, yeah. um, have a tower where you could take it, and within an hour, two hours, whatever, it goes dead. You know, in relation to how long missions would usually take to their oh, standard. Okay, you know? so you, so once you captured, you don't have it all the time. You just have it for a duration. Yeah, yeah, that, a, a that, duration. But in that duration, yeah. it could be taken back. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Say, say you want an LZ. You want to take a. You, you want to call an LZ. Hopefully, those PMCs are not camping that tower, which they shouldn't be. Plus, with how many enemy AIs there that's going to be in the area, you should be able to hear shots and guesstimate yeah. where those players are. So you could go take tower real quick, and it won't notify them for, say, a minute until tower is taken, right? Or two minutes after tower is taken. Yeah. And then their yeah. commander will come online. Hey, uh, somebody just took the tower in your area. Or the tower is offline in your area. Something to the case yeah. of that, you know. It probably should be yeah. one or the other. So say if the ca the tower goes dead and your timer runs out, hey, tower needs to be retaken in the area. Something like that to that basicness. And then, or, or somebody took the tower. So as soon as you take the tower, you could call an LZ and nobody's going to know who called that. 
you know, on the other oh, yeah, opposing yeah, team. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's yeah, going to yeah, be the basicness. Yeah, yeah. All of these towers yeah. are going to play as it's a... It's going to be PvP. Uh, yeah, that, that's going to be like the PvP areas. Yeah, basically. Yeah, Which it, I think is a great it's idea. Gonna initiate, yeah, it's going to initiate the PvP. Or you can just chance it and just call in and just hope for yeah. the best, right? But, yeah, and wait I, your I, eight minutes perhaps, which we still yeah. do not know yet. If like you're on the other side of the map and it's going to take that eight minutes, the helicopter very well might just spawn like uh, so many other people have told me. You know, but I mean, realistically, you'd be yeah, waiting, and it, you know? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. And who knows? If you start and and if you start where everyone else started now, like base camp B, uh, the other players in base camp A and stuff like that that is like around the airfield will see where the helicopter is coming from as well. Yeah, they will see it's coming from the south. Like most likely, that's an enemy team, right? Like you have to watch the direction of the helicopter. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, and I think the, the radio towers should be localized. So, like the airfield will have, um, you know... Uh, yeah, central. The air, uh, no, 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 the air tower where everyone directs the flights, right? The, mm. the, uh, the radio will be in that tower or in, in the fort. There will be a radio communication uh, bunker and, there, and that's the radio over there. And like in Tiger Bay, it's like on the seafront because it's you know um like like uh sea radio uh, radio station so it would be over there or like in the hunter's paradise it would be just a ch uh, a shack with like a radio in it like i think they should be customizing it and so, uh, with how it looks the radio tower it shouldn't be the same oh it's that radio tower over there it should be its its own a spe uh, specific uh, to the um, uh, to the yeah to the like point of interest it should be its own thing so like midnight sapphire will have like cuz i think that's a hotel from the videos we've seen like the perhaps pre alpha yeah. videos yeah yeah cuz that's the only thing that makes sense to me that mid mm -hmm. uh, midnight sapphire is the hotel that they show that looks awesome by the way uh and yeah, so yeah, basically the starting towns have a radio shack or whatever, or you use the FOB, uh, uh, the base radio that covers that. I think the base radio should cover the first town so they can't be taken over. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it should be like customized to every point of view to make it makes it more unique and more fun. Yeah, one thousand percent. And I think it would be. Um... A very great idea for them to at least give this a good thought because you can refine it as well like oh, what yeah. we say is just it's just stuff that pops up oh we can do this and do this and they can just like refine it even more like they probably has more ideas than we do like right like, so oh yeah with with their big team but um yeah th this is Pretty much a fix to what Landmark had talked about, which we're about to cover. But um, oh yeah, yeah he he had spoke about. Uh, let me see if I could find it in my notes here. If PvP is ward rewarding enough, and like if there's going to be enough PvP and enough stuff to keep you interested. So I mean, there's those people I don't think which. He I'm gonna be hunting, you know. I'm I'm gonna be hunting people straight off the bat. PVP. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna hunt people. This would be yeah, an awesome I'm totally way, the same. you know, awesome way to uh, uh, for players to cover their ass when they're in a town, and for me to hunt them, you know, yeah. vice versa, you know. It, it, I think it'll be awesome. You will maybe because you will take the tower first, and then you will sit back and then wait for someone else to take the tower, maybe, yeah. or. Yeah, or something like yeah. It's it's like I I don't think the PvP is gonna be a problem here, and I I think Landmark never saw the whole map as well. Yeah, so, that too. That's why I, I, I messaged think, him. I I'd love to yeah. do a video with him, but I mean, uh, I'm just a little I think it, little old boy. <laughs> I think Drewski didn't have uh, the whole video, and he and then he watched Rilo, and I know Rilo he doesn't 
he doesn't spoil anything. Like he only oh, yeah. showed the first town. Like he didn't show anything else. Rilo he, is he, he, fucking awesome about that for sure. Yeah. He's keep he's keeping everything like like oh don't show too much of the map. Okay, I will not show too much of the map. Like it's his videos is fucking awesome. But and then he watched the IGN one and they don't show the full map that, there either. But I think if Landmark actually saw the whole map and how it's structured, I think he wouldn't say the PvP would be a problem because you know the ground zero, everyone's gonna go there or lurk in the hills around ground zero. Because that whole area in the middle is just hills. Just hills. Hills with jungle, basically. That's going to be a very contested area. And I think you would need special gear to get in there as well. So yeah. if, you, if you die with that special gear, you you have to get that special gear again. Maybe by a, by a mission or if you just buy it. But then radioactive special or chemical or whatever it's gonna be quite expensive and i think there might be tears because the ground zero has different circles like one very light and then it gets red and more red and more red so i think you would have like tier tier three gear would be the the outmost circle of the like radioactive zone so I'd, yeah uh i think the pvp is and then you have the airfield, you have Tiger Bay, and you have Fort. Like everyone is gonna go to those in PvP. That like, yeah, I I think the PvP is gonna be okay. It's it's yeah. not gonna be as bad as what a uh, landmark thinks. Now, I mean, if you're careless at all and you just keep dying, yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty bad. <laughs> yes, yes. If you run this as Call of Duty, but you you I, gotta think. You, the only other game like this is Tarkov, pretty much, and you will one hundred percent faster yeah, uh, you, you'll be able to get to your gear way faster the same gear you know into the same mission rather as going in a scav as a scav and playing while your friends get out and then your friends get out they're waiting on you and then you got to wait on them again to get their gear situated then they want to run a scav so you can't do the scav stuff like that you know you're gonna better get back into the same match right away just take yes, a heli straight there boom you know? I think he said that as well. He didn't like that because you would just be fighting and fighting. But he, I don't think he thought about that. Even if they fly in with a helicopter and it takes like five minutes, you will be able to hear the helicopter firstly. Yeah. So you can just go and pick him off because he's going to be alone. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. That's, it's, that's a whole nother way of looking at it. You know, it, it's yeah, risk like, versus reward. You, you want to come in with another full set of gear to lose that gear too? I mean, come on, be, yeah, exactly. take your yeah, shot, yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, so most people is probably going to land on an LC further away to mitigate that risk. <clears> and then they're going to have to run all the way. And I've seen, so I, I actually take no, uh, took note of this because most streamers said, oh, they're just going to keep running. No one's going to walk. And it's like, yeah, the stamina nah. did, did it, <laughs> like the running stamina only lasted like 10 seconds and then you have to refill it. You have to run, start walking and then run again. Like you can't keep running like in Tarkov. Like you can't do that in this. You have running stamina. So I think it's going to be that guy that goes in and lands on an LC further away. It's going to take a far longer time to get there. And if he's on the other side of the map, it's going to take even longer time. And so I don't, th I don't think we will have the rust problem with the just like respawn and you keep fighting the same guy because he gets his loot back. And another thing is, so with the whole tower thing we talked about earlier, if you come back, who's to say you're going straight for your gear? You might go grab a tower, yeah. you, the, the tower yeah, yeah. and wait for them to call an LZ, you know? Who knows? Or try to flank them from behind. Like, it's, yeah. I, I don't think it's gonna... I would wish there was, like, a respawn timer, but I think that would be too... That would be too bad, because you don't, you don't get booted to the menu. You're actually in the server, so that would be pretty sad to just sit and wait on a black screen or whatever. That, um... <clears throat> 
that's why a, pl a play in to like what you said earlier of um calling in for reinforcements and being able to hear that if you have like their radio or whatnot yeah that, that plays a very specific part here so say if you get attacked you call in reinforcements those enemies now know you called reinforcements are they going to yeah. risk going for your gear when they only took one out of possibly four of you down with reinforcements on the way? Are they going to call reinforcements? You know, hey, we got PvP, call reinforcements. Now you know that they know that th you know reinforcements were called, you know? <laughs> that's their, this whole situation going back and forth. Now, the tower can be implemented in a multitude of different ways further, you know? It's just... It's too much. And I really didn't want to cover that too much because we're we're at the span of 40 minutes now. I'd really like to cover uh, what you thought on the pistol recoil of uh, what Landmark had said. I don't think, yeah, I don't think it's that bad because the one time he had bad recoil, he uh, Drewski spammed about it, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like he, like, he shot really fast. And I've seen... And then he shoots slowly, and it's it's controllable and doesn't have that much <clears throat> recoil. But when he spammed it, it was like shots after shots after. Like it's like um, the recoil gets compounded because you shoot too fast with a pistol. I don't know if that happens in real life. I oh, I've only shot slowly, and I mean I've only shot like one or two two pistols, but. It is I've a light seen gun. On YouTube. Yeah, it, it, yeah, and I've seen people on YouTube spam the shots, and the barrel goes a bit higher. But if you shoot slowly, the recoil wasn't that bad. It's a light gun, and say something like a suppressor. It'll weigh down the barrel a little bit more. Something like yeah, um, yeah. Uh, because I don't think we had mods for pistols, right? Or did we? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely mods for pistols. It showed um, yeah, like, on his pistol specifically, like, there was not, I don't believe. But um, I would love to see a video of a standard Glock or whatever we were they, using. They have this. one. Uh, no, no, no. I mean like a, like a real video for oh, somebody in the oh, US oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 to, yeah. Spam sh to spam shoot and try and... Re uh, like, I want to see re them react. shoot as fast as... Yeah, shoot as fast as possible and see how the recall is in real life because i think it would be about the same if you just shoot as fast as possible and not like you know panic shooting i'd imagine or whatever but uh yeah, there's cause... also the real life implementation of your mag going dry and more recall plus it's gonna be boring if there's no skills to level up okay so Say that's your your worst. You're at your worst right there. But the more yeah, you use yeah. your pistol and the more you train with it in practice, you get better recoil. I mean, obviously, that's how it works in real life, you know? I'd love that aspect. It, there has to be an aspect like that. It can't just be yeah. Call of Duty, you put this, you set that threshold for this attachment, and it's fucking good to go, yeah. and it's the same for everybody. No. That is boring. That is repetitive. That is dog shit. No. Nobody wants that. Meta come, yeah, and meta will. Yeah, meta, meta will, will overrule. Way, yeah. But if you have better <laughs> skill, you don't have to run that co uh, compensator. You can run something else, maybe. Like well, my thing is, you have a little I, better skill. I'm getting my setup for exactly what I want: MK18 and a pistol, and I will run that nonstop until it's max skilled, unless the the oh, skills man. are freaking like useless at the beginning of EA you know, and our, our dog shit, which, I mean, who knows? I'd, I'd rather them yeah. not have any skills and focus the main core aspects of the game, you know, and get that yeah. situated with AI and all before having skills, to be honest, because that could be just, like, uh, Insurgency Sandstorm, you know, Arma. Yeah. That, there's no skills behind that from what I'm aware of. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's completely fine in that aspect, but everybody wants to level something, especially if you want to grab them Tarkov players they want to they want to stick around and level their shit you know yeah and they want pvp we need pvp yeah. 
I, but I, I, don't, I don't think that I don't think the PvP would be <laughs> the P, I don't think the PvP would be, be a thing because everyone it, will go to the big places for PvP. Yeah, basically. there's there's not gonna be an issue. I, yeah, I, I oh, highly doubt I that. Thought, I, I thought about something that no YouTuber I've seen talked about actually. Which we've already talked uh, about. We've talked about so many different things nobody's talked about just now. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 but like, like because everyone was using it, but they didn't think about it. What's the up? five five six ammo. Okay. Everyone was bringing in so much ammo, right? What do you do if you like? I'm gonna go to the other side of the map. How do you get ammo then? Like, how much ammo do you have? Like, am I gonna bring five mags and sixty more rounds? Like, you're gonna have to bring in so much ammo to survive out. Like, I like I'm gonna clear out Pang in the Palang <clears throat> airfield, right? If the guys in camp A go to Panglang Airfield, they can bring ammo, like, their minimal ammo. But if camp C or camp B are gonna go to Panglang Airfield, they're gonna have to bring in so much ammo. So I think... Yeah. I don't think I don't think there's gonna be a meta on guns, because it's gonna be a meta on ammo. I think if, if you're gonna go a long distance across the map, people are gonna run AKs, because you can find AKM on the ground or on AIs. Yeah, but if you run closely to your compound or your base, you can run F uh, five five six because you can. If you die or whatever, you can go back and you still have your ammo there and stuff like that. I I did I didn't see anyone talk about that because they ran out of ammo quite fast. I I saw they... someone had like two hundred extra rounds of ammo with them and they ran out of that. Like, sure the AI was a bit spongy at times. But still, but still, like yeah, there we, were. We haven't seen the better AIs if they have five, five, six. But the military had AKs, so there were multiple POIs. So say a crash, a little bird with PMCs, PMC operators. Oh, I'd, yeah, I'd assume that to be yeah, like an ammo dump that you could yeah. uh, scrounge for munitions there. As well as the UN was there. Now, was that the UN and like its forces at the beginning to help um, yeah. get everybody out of there? That's, yeah. That's and did some UN leave stuff behind, you know, because they had to hurry up and evacuate and they just said, screw the supplies, leave it, you know? Because it obviously, if it's like a martial law in quotations type thing, there's going to be law and order. That comes, you know, and I'd assume the UN was probably there with munitions at the beginning, yeah. but also there the was more... the force that took out the PMC operators in the beginning before we come into the picture. Where were they yeah. taken out? Possibly multiple different locations. That's going to be POIs. At least it, there, there needs to be. You know, you can't just say that in the lore and then there's no POIs to back that. You know, which yeah. those PMC I operators think. had definitely five, five, six ammunition. That would be insane if they weren't, you know. Yeah. Or I maybe the one, bandits took them. You know, some of them I might have, have that. You know, the different. Um, I think AI. one of the developer Sherpas that helped the teams in the beginning, like the first run they did, talked about POIs that are on the map. It's not all the POIs. Yeah. No, they, had, no, they're definitely, to, they're definitely to, putting yeah. more for sure. Yeah, they had, they had to discover them first before they like show up on the map or something like that. Yeah, like in the jungle, there's gonna be POIs in the jungle. We just don't see them yet and, because they, they aren't the main POIs. And with the each wipe update stuff like that, there's gonna be POIs for sure. Yeah, which um, I think the honestly, I, wipe I hope six months in. I hope they do not state much information behind that. Say, okay, you're you're working on POIs, cool. Don't tell us where, don't tell us what kind, yeah, don't tell yeah, us how yeah, much. Exactly. Le leave that questionable to where you make people want to go scrounge and look for them. But whenever they find them, don't have like, oh, it's a pencil and a written note or something <laughs> stupid. You know, that that's not a POI. Yeah. That's bullshit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Have something big for multiple factions to see, you know, because you, you want to stay balanced, have... It, every update should be an equal amount 
of POI, stuff like that, unless it's a central-based POI, which is hard to make a central-based POI because you're split one-thirds. You know, it, it, yeah, it would have to be dead center of the map, the POI that you add, if you add one POI on an update. You know, you, you really want it balanced. So they really need to figure, okay, we're going to add another POI. We need to make three POIs, okay? It, depending upon what location they put it. Yeah. You know, because the last thing I want to do is be uh, faction this and I can't switch and I'm at base camp uh, A, which is the top right side. And then it's bottom left side of the map where the POI is added. That yeah. that just sounds very unbalanced and crap to me, you know? Yeah. It should be multiple POIs for... Just, yeah, my opinion, map, you know? Basically. It, it shouldn't be balanced. on one side of the map where, <laughs> Definitely yeah, a balanced, yeah, balanced. Uh, uh, updates what and all. Did, what else did Landmark... Uh, we pretty much touched about. on death and retrieving your gear. Uh, being yeah. forced to play with potentially 15 others you can't kill. But you can kill them. Oh, yeah. You know, we yeah, just don't yeah, know what the rogue the system looks like, stuff like that. And I, I really yes. don't want to touch base on this too much because we, we don't know anything about it. You know, I mean... Yeah. We know that we're coming into this game expecting to play with 15 other friends, in quotations, you know, they're, yeah. you know, friendlies yeah. compared to yeah. 32, uh, 32 other players, you know, something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm not really uh, mathing right now, but um, basically, 48. yeah, 40, yeah, 32 yeah, yeah, other yeah, yeah, uh, possible enemy players, you know, uh, opposing yeah. faction players, you know. Which is, for a map of, in quotations, 42 kilometers, we still don't know the ratio to what each square is, but we're estimating a thousand meters or kilometers, whatever. You know, not really yeah. to go into the map too much again, but um, once again, I, I don't feel there's going to be an issue with PvP, especially if they consider what we just spoke about and came up with on the fly, might I add. This is not like <laughs> rehearsed. This is on the fucking fly. We just came up with that shit out of the box, you know? Just add the towers, you know, and figure out where y'all might want to place the towers. I, I think it's a pretty easy implementation, you know, a, a first update type thing. And if y'all see that there's not enough PvP and there's too much people complaining about there. it, you know? Yeah. I mean, make yeah. it simple. Make it make it a main location that you want to take over where the the bandits or whatever. Whoever is in that town has that location taken over to where it's not as easy to take that location. But once you do, it makes the area a little bit easier, you know? Yes. Something and like that. When it goes offline or whatever, when the duration of your faction has <clears> held <throat> power, when, it, when that expires just normally, the yeah. AI takes over the tower again. Yeah. Uh, pretty so simple this, implementation. Like, yeah. You know, uh, and yeah, so we have confirmed you can go rogue. Yeah, uh, they haven't figured out the karma system or whatever you're gonna call it. They haven't figured that one out yet. But you could go rogue, and if you go rogue, you get kicked out of your faction, and then you're against. If you're going solo, you're against forty-one players. Like, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. You, yeah, you, yeah, you can be uh, against a lot of players, like. So yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's a very touchy it, subject. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it's can, it's gonna have to definitely can, be addressed. You, like PvP, you can go against like everyone. It's <laughs> an an easy way for the beginning, though. If they can't address this right away, turn friendly fire off. I mean, uh, on yes, I, oh, off. But, Fuck, did I say that back oh. ass words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you, yeah, 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 yeah. I said it right the first time. Do not be yeah. the, the ability not to shoot the other friendlies. Period. That's all you need in the beginning. I, yes, and then toss the game out to, there. I would love for them to have that the first month or so to everyone good to for them to do the testing, what they oh, yeah. need to do testing. And then, because the, then you would only focus on faction against faction PvP, and yep. they can get their uh, uh, results from that, and then you can turn on PvE like uh, uh, team killing. Yeah, because I would I would love to have 
I, I would love to don't have mm -hmm. to worry about TK because the first town is gonna be hell otherwise. Like everyone is gonna try and t TK just just for the fun of it or whatever. But if you turn that off the first maybe week or two or maybe the, a whole month, that will make players okay. It's more fun killing other players than my own teammates. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think they should do that for the first month just to have their own internal testing and get the results and get, fix everything except instead of having hundreds of or maybe thousands of players whining, why is everyone team killing me? Yeah. I and think they should focus on I, everything else first. I think that would be a very big issue right off the bat. Last thing I want to oh. do is spawn, grab some gear, take a heli in, and get team killed. Faction killed. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, lose exactly. my shit right away, you know. It yeah, is just like, that, what, what the hell, man? You know, that's that's dumb. Or e or even if you walk, they're just gonna camp that as well, maybe. Like you don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <sighs> it's just it, that's a very touchy thing. That's yeah. that's why I don't want to touch on it too much because that's literally a whole video for like an hour or more just in itself. We could easily yeah, speak about that. That's yeah. That's why it's, it's like the, the best way to leave it is like what we said in the beginning. Just turn it off. No friendly fire. Yep. It's it's that simple for now, Not, you know, until it's yeah. fixed where, where they have it, yeah, where they yeah. want it. Exactly. Through testing, yeah. play testing yeah. and feedback, you know. Yeah. But um, another they thing yeah. that um, Landmark had said once, wow, I lost it. Shit, where the hell did I put it? Um, if there's enough things to do that it'll keep you interested and then PvP rewarding enough for you to play, which is the main one I want to touch on, which I don't think we really covered. Um, so, rewarding enough, I mean... I... Zero? I'm just, I'm just saying ground... Like... We don't know. We don't know anything because you can't actually see Ground Zero because it's too much red there over there. But I like just rewarding to get in. I I think you need special the gear to get in, so you have to get that. And then when you get in there, like we don't know, like aliens or chemical weapons or whatever. Like we don't know, right? I think there's gonna be Ground Zero is gonna probably gonna have the best loot. And the like the most advanced AI, I think it's gonna be hell to get in there. And if you start a fight in there and there's other players in there, they're gonna go for you because they they want the third party. That's that's how you play PvP games, right? You want the third party because that's the easiest way, right? Yeah. Um, so so uh, oh yeah, suppressors is gonna be huge. It's not just gonna be a meme in games where Call of Duty or whatever, you just use it for like, oh, have a suppressor. It's gonna be huge in this game to like conceal your own fighting. Cause if you run open-ended, like, like a flash hider or whatever, that sound is gonna travel. <laughs> yeah. My, um, my basic thoughts about PvP being worth it. Um, so you don't know what type of gear is going to be on that person, but essentially it's another time you could go out and die and just lose their gear, not your gear. You know, if you were to kill yeah. somebody and take their gear. But also from yeah. a money standpoint, those players are out there to do multiple different things you could play the game how you want but more but more than likely they're going to be doing missions to progress which i i expect nothing else than you know the it, certain items to be locked behind missions and having done quests which there should be uh, i mean it it just yeah, makes it sense should, it should for be a progression yeah, yeah you, you need a progression where you make people play the game and do missions and stuff or pvp or loot stuff and find the stuff you know stuff like that yeah but if they're doing yeah. missions right so if you kill somebody who's doing a mission and say they have a mission item on them 
you should be able to pick up however many of that said items. So say they, they find the cell phone and another team member of theirs picked up the cell phone also. You should be able to grab both cell phones, use one for your quest if you didn't do that quest yet in the future, or sell both of yeah. them for money, you know? Oh, that should be a yeah. thing. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Unless they put it in the secure container, of course. So Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yes. true. I literally nobody else is touching base on the secure container. So that might be um something else for and, a future and, video. And it's not huge either. Like I think the paper file was like quite huge in comparison to the secure container. It's like I think it was like one third of the container. So if you're doing multiple missions at the same time, I don't think you can fill like you would have mission critical stuff in your normal inventory because I don't like it's there. It's not huge. It's, I think it's like three times two squares or something. Yeah. And I, I hope that's kind of upgradable. But um, just basically... For our last thing here, I wanted to touch on Big Fry, and uh, you could add in anything yeah. else after. So, basically, visually, he um, he said, visually, it looks fucking great. That's his words, quite literally. Uh, AI has some issues. He seems this is the best EA game, early access game, not Electronic Arts fucking game <laughs> he's seen and he's very impressed which i like 100 percent agree to that point you know ai 1000 percent has issues and i could probably critique it more than what he said because um i'm pretty sure he's not watching all the videos that we are you know we we're loot yeah. goblins we we, we want to see freaking every aspect of what everyone else is seeing you know for the first week, I'll probably just be watching videos, not even playing a damn game. That's the issue. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I pretty much agree with everything he zero. said. What uh, what do you think? Yeah, so he had some concern as same as Landmark, um, and we don't know how advanced the other AI is. Like maybe they made a beginning AI stupid. But I, when I saw them shoot other players, they were pretty accurate. Like, it was upper chest or head. Like, yeah. that's what I saw. Like, they weren't bad shots. They just behaved stupid. And that was a pre-alpha. That was an old build as well. So they, may, they might have, like, expanded on the AI. But that was the worst AI on the map as well. Like, people have to understand that that's not all the AI. Hopefully, at least. We don't know, but what they have said before, that's just beginning AI. So yeah, I'm thinking like all the other AI will behave more like players and be a lot more like conscious or whatever. Like, like they had this, uh, like if they kill one of you, they will get more, uh, 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 what's it called? They will be more brave, right? And push you. And if you kill too many of them, they will be too scared and they will, like, defensively retreat. So, yeah, I, th I, uh, yeah, I agree on some, like, some AI were just standing there stupid. Like, yeah, I understand S something has happened with that, but it's, that was like a month old build. And that was like a month old on the IGN build that they did. Um. Yeah, so, and have you seen how much they patch the game, by the way, on the Steam thing? Like, they patch it, like, once Very every awesome. two hours. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, they're, pa they're, like, they're patching, patching, pa like, it's stupid how much they patch, like, doing live, pa like, insane. Um, but, yeah, I, yeah, there were some things I didn't um, agree with, but. I can't remember them now, but yeah, in in, oh, good. in in the great space of things, like yeah, the I agreed on the like what's it called uh, the performance when you like he went from uh, fourteen forty high settings down to medium, 
and he got like 10 frames. I was like, Oof. what the fuck? And, and then he went down to... I don't think he went down to 1080p, but it was another streamer that had a 10, a 2070 Ti and old pro like a 9000 uh, 9000 uh, in uh, 9700k Intel processor I think it was and like 64 gigs of RAM it was really bad for him but when he turned it down to like 1080p medium settings he had like 70 fps like I think it's doable it seems like the higher higher end PCs think they can run this game flawlessly with high settings and 4k i think that's might be the problem yeah Um, because for me i'm quite old so i'm used to 4k 60 fps i'm not used to the like new games 4k 120 i'm like 4k for for me back in the day was like that was the that was space space nasa pc like that was insane and usually you went yeah it's 60 fps on 4k that's what you have to get used to um but yeah i think yeah performance is i think most of it will be fleshed out by the time the game comes or when we get more videos with a newer build on it or the close beta that they said they would have before ea um i don't know if they're gonna have it now (laughs) <laughs> but the but they did say they were gonna have a close beta before the release of early access. That's what it said. If they keep to that promise, we will see see it probably sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um. Because they probably want to test AMD builds again because they had a problems. Uh, I mean, they're they're running very close. Um. To the end of the month yeah. here, you know, I I would have yeah. expected a an official like towards what Mara said before the twenty three minutes of footage even released, you know. Yeah. But uh, here's what it is. I already know that um, there's a huge expectation that at least oh. one month delay. I'm I'm banking on three, and I'm totally fine with. This is not I'm official. I'm banking on you know, yeah, but I'm banking on two actually. Yeah. I don't think, anywhere's I don't around think there yeah i don't think they're too far away and i think we would had we would would have had the closed beta when just after the streamers had it i think if they kept the q1 that's that that's what i thought i th- i thought they would have the streamers do their thing get the hype up and then release a couple of days later the closed beta but they got delayed so I'm thinking maybe half a month to a month we will see close beta. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. After and, after Q1, so that would be like. And I I'd, I'd absolutely expect nothing more than for a closed beta because unless they're doing then, it right now and they just invited more content creators oh, yeah, or whatever, yeah, we, we you know, wouldn't know, we wouldn't. Right? Yeah, we wouldn't know. But um, yeah. unless they made an official announcement, you know, but um. I I don't know how that would look, you know, what that announcement would look like. But to my knowledge, I mean, being that there's quite a few people that you could play with on the server and they had just below half of that, you know, uh, content creators wise. I think there's what, 20 people that played the uh, alpha pretest. Yeah, that's yeah, not even 20, 30. That's that's yeah. not even half. You know, you, you yeah. need at least half on the map to test the full of everything you know to my knowledge yeah. you know i i i'm not no creator uh beto- no, besides but... content creation you know like i i don't develop anything but uh videos you know for you guys but if you want to test the server stability you have to have the full server that's yeah just that's that's what i figured you know but uh, we'll see uh anything you want to uh, add the... Oof. I saw something fun actually on was that uh i'm gonna share uh my screen here or window um so screens no applications that one 
Tell me if you can see it. I see it, I see it. Yeah. So we do this. Okay, so this is an overview. It's pointed towards the northeast. So this here is northeast. And this here is camp uh, where the where the all the um, alpha testers, like the streamers and stuff, and YouTube creators okay. tested. This is the here, right? This is one of the things we were talking about some uh, days ago. The yeah. Little mountain. Yeah. One thing I noticed. There's a shape like of a there's building. A house. Yeah, there's a shape of a building on top of it. So that's. That, can you, like. Can you toss that screenshot to me? That's a great point out there. Whenever you have the chance. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. It's on the other server. I and then Ground it. Zero is like right in front of us. Yeah, yeah, right there. Like, this is Ground Zero. As you can see, it's hills and valleys. Yeah, no this missing trees. Be, yeah, it's gonna be insane fighting in that. Like, we see on the other map, there's like some clearings between the valleys. And this is just the first valley wall, basically, the wall until you get into ground zero. It's gonna be insane in there. It's, I think it is gonna be patrols and all that stuff inside of the ground, around the ground zero, cause it's ground zero. You want to have some protection or whatever. Like, yeah, it's- It's gonna be and sick. You have, yeah, and then you have Tiger Bay here, like the pir pirate or whatever. It sounds yeah. very piratey, like Tiger Bay. Like <laughs> it does. Yeah. No, That's the, crazy. The, this is just uh, the, this is my fa favorite screenshots for now, at least. Um, looks really. You see so much of it, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is actually up like they had like mod hacks on so they flew up and took a print screen but you can see very far and like the render distance or the draw distance on everything looks fucking beautiful like yeah sure out here is what are that like two kilometers maybe you don't see any grass right but as soon as you get like within one kilometer you see grass immediately. yeah so it won't we won't have the dc problem Hopefully, where bushes despawn when they're over 500 meters or something, that would be annoying. I don't think there are any sight lines longer than... I think there is a couple that are like 500 plus meters or maybe a kilometer, but... I don't think we will have a... Draw. That, 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 that was actually my biggest concern. Definitely uh, a big I game for sure. Some... Yeah, I see that problem in a lot of games where they, as soon as there's, it's over 500 meters, it spawns. So even if you hide it in a bush, you won't be hiding a bush for a for some person running the lowest possible graphics just to get the edge right to see people. Yeah, but the, <clears throat> but the guy that had a 2070 when he flew in with his reduced graphics, I could still see bushes out to a thousand meters. It's just that the bushes were uh really bad you know they were like very textured Either, you couldn't like you couldn't see leaves and stuff it was just a blob but the bush was still there right yeah so, so i was really happy about that anything you would like to uh add on top of this can't wait for the game <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's I it know. that's all of us <laughs> shit yeah well oh, uh... and the night mode like six months yeah. off the EA, that's gonna be I, insane. And then you have like the weather events where you have monsoon seasons and everything floods. That's gonna be insane. As like Jesus Christ, it's it's like a Battlefield Four map with you know with the live stuff happening, the storms and stuff, but it's on a persistent server instead. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's gonna be freaking insane. I I could easily live in one server in this game for quite some time. Yeah, 